Hi, everybody. This is Arthur English, and I have some very special guests today. Uh, I just want to call your attention to something because it's very, very evident. Today, in the New York Post, Monday, uh, July 22nd, the year 2001, I want to just point to you, uh, hold up an article, um, and it says, um, Mom, why kidnap my child? The, the, sub, the, the big headline is, is this woman a hero or a lunatic? I'm going to have you decide. So right now, I'd like you to meet DeAndrea, DeAndrea and DeAndrea. DeAndrea. Welcome. Uh, I read the article, and I think the, part, the point of this thing is to make a difference for you in the minds of the people who are watching this, whether they be people who have thought they knew, or they thought they knew you, or they thought they knew the story. Why don't you, in the briefest amount of time, state your, state your case? Well, first of all, I think it's inappropriate to state that I kidnapped my own child. Um, I wrote a book about this case, and if anybody did any kidnapping, it was the government kidnapping my child. Right. Um, uh, I'll just brief off the back of the book, which pr pretty much tells the whole story. Uh, this is probably the most horrendous case of child abuse and judicial corruption in New York City to date. This true life conspiracy and cover up involves judges lawyers, the district attorney's office, the police department, employees of the Administration for Children's Services, and the family court. These depraved individuals diligently work together to clear a 20-year veteran of the New York City Police Department of child abuse charges and even child support. They further destroyed evidence against him. Could this be why you virtually never hear about judges, police, district attorneys, or politicians being arrested for child abuse? I think so, and I... I the point. Tell us more. Well, right now, uh, David Lansner, he's an attorney in New York City, found in a comfortable uh, number of women coming into his office stating, my child was abused by my husband, New York City police people, and the court systems were giving these child abusing cops custody of the children. So when this first happened to me back in 1997, I thought it was an isolated case. I thought it was just happening to me. But here and to learn that it is happening to many, many women who married to police. What do you think? Uh, it's, it's a blue wall of silence. Is that the term? Yes. They do, whether they uh, beat their wives, uh, domestic violence, or uh, abusing their children, there's a major cover up. Now, my ex-husband, his name is Gerard Joseph Murray, he uh, violated an order of protection several times. You don't need evidence when you violate an order of protection. I had evidence that he violated it. He was never arrested. Where was he? I would think because he's a, a cop. Did, did they ever bring DeAndre into, into conversation? Did you, was she ever able to speak her piece? Or, were you ever able to speak your piece? No. What would you say? What would you, what, what what happened for you? What what? How do you feel now? I feel great now. Tell me why. Oh, well, the people don't know the circumstances. Well, that's, a little, what, that's okay. We'll find out. So, tell us why you feel great now. I'm with my mom. That's the important thing. What does that feel like? Great. Yeah, where you belong. Yeah. And you've been separated from her for four years. Yeah. What was it like to be separated from your mom? Terrible. Could you write? You only could see her what two months, or two to two hours a month. Highly supervised. If you wanted, if you wanted to, to if you thought that you'd be, be separated from your mother again, what would you feel like? What, what, what thoughts come to your mind? Well, I mean, this may, I, this may not be permanent. I know. So what, what you, you have to, you have to really say what, how would that feel to you to be separated? I don't want to happen. Yeah. I don't want it to happen. It happened before, and I don't want it to happen again. Yeah. She had a nightmare the other night that the uh, police had taken her again. Yeah. And uh, she just woke up hysterical, crying. 
it felt really bad to see her in that state. Yeah. How old are you? Eleven. Eleven. Probably feel like you're an old person already with all the experiences you've had, huh? Yeah. But you know, but you're very lovely. You're, you're, um, you have a, a twinkle in your eye. You have optimism. You have a smile. You look like you, you know who you look like? What? Barbara Streisand. Ah. Yeah. When she was a young, yeah. If you look really closely at you, you look like Barbara Streisand when she was around 13 years old. You know who Barbara Streisand is? Mm. Fabulous. Well, it's okay that you don't know who it is right now, but <laughs> what, what, what's your talent? What do you love to do? Sing. Love to sing. What kind of songs do you like to sing? Any. Anything? Uh, is there a song that comes to mind that you like to sing, like briefly? Yeah. A freedom song, perhaps, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, how, how have you celebrated your last birthday? Uh, I don't think I had a sleepover. Sleepover. Away from mom or with mom? Away from mom? Away from mom. Yeah. Uh, we haven't had any holidays in the past four years. No holidays, not even a phone call on either birthday, her birthday or my birthday. No Christmas, no New Year's. Um, the third foster mother was the cruelest. She was in three separate foster, uh, four foster homes. The third one was Jewish and she ripped my daughter's cross off. Uh, she wouldn't allow any gifts, even, no matter how small they were. She would wear, a, a, bought her a down jacket for last year. It was freezing winter. Wouldn't allow her to wear her ja down jacket because her children didn't have a down jacket. Let me just talk about this. You have experienced, DeAndre, being in with uh, four other mothers. What, what's that life? What's that life every, every day about for you? She's with, that she's with people that you don't even know about. It was horrifying with the third one because she was so abusive. She was abusing my daughter constantly. Um, my daughter, physically? No, not physically. Mentally? Mentally. Torturing her. And um, Wait, also... What was she saying? She kept saying, your mother's mental. You can't go home to her because she's crazy. Your mother's not mental at all. I know. She's mentally brilliant. <laughs> and she's mentally in love with you. That's for sure. You yeah. both love each other. Anyone could see that. Right. That's for so, sure. So, I mean, this, 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 you both are like prisoners. Like prisoners. The reason um, I portray, yeah, it, there are prison bars over her face. It, I, because it is a prison. Do you know that a murderer has m far more rights than a child in foster care? Child in foster care has supervised visits and you're not allowed to talk. I wasn't allowed to tell my daughter that I had a television program. I wasn't allowed to tell my daughter I wrote a book about her. Um, she would have her letters screened, you know, before she gave them to me. Um, they criticized her letters. She wrote a letter to her attorney and they uh, lambasted the letter stating that she had no right to give this letter to her attorney but unfortunately i was able to get it on court record so do you need a pardon what do you need <laughs> right yeah i mean like 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 what do you what do you need i think that these criminals who are running children's services should stop what they're doing stop stealing children that were never abused by their parents and stop turning children who were abused over to the abuser That's right. because they're trying to take my daughter and hand her over to her father her father not only seriously abused her as when she, four years ago but he abused her in m many different ways which we don't want to get into the details of the abuse but he also killed her dog this man is sick he kicked her little yorkshire terrier down the stairs and broke her neck because he was angry the dog wouldn't come to him. Is that true, Leandro? Yeah. You see it? You saw the dead dog? What was your feelings when, the, when you saw the dead dog? Real sad. Because <laughs> it was my own dog. And what was the dog's name? Gwendolyn. And how, how long did you have Gwendolyn? I think about a few years, I'm not sure. And how old were you? Eight, six, like seven? Four, three, five, something like that. Now, she was, um, she was exactly six. You had, you, you have, you, you had, you slide your show? Yes, I do. Here? Um, even though I'm on the lamb, um, I put in all the programs in advance because mm -hmm. I knew I would, you know, and 